It's time to print our design. But first, we need to create some G codes and a slicer program. Okay, so you have the model, whether you design them yourself or purchase them on my 3D file store. If you purchase the model, so you already have the steel versions. But if you design this project in SOLIDWORKS, first you need to convert them to STL format. For example, I start with the nose section, I open the component and press Ctrl Shift S for save as. And simply here I select the STL. Save, yes. Okay. Now we have the STL version and we bring it into the slicer program. I select the model and here I select the face to align to the build plate. And I select this face and I bring it back to the center of the build plate. Okay, after the alignment of position and orientation, we need to adjust the setting of the print process. As we have a printer with 0.4 mm thickness of the extruder, we need to adjust the layer height something below that number. If we use the same number, the print layers will be made of these circles that has almost no adhesion between each other so it will be very very weak and the result will be very distorted. I use 0.3 it is okay with the rigidity and the adhesion between the layers and also it is faster than 0.2. And again, as we have the 0.4 extruder and we want to print every shell and stripe shell with the thickness of 0.8 millimeters with two pass of the extruder, we adjust the wall thickness on 0.8 and the wall count on 2. Everything else in this section is on the default setting. And in the infill section, I set it on the 16% because it has 5 mm distance between the infill lines. It's low weight and prevents the overhang at the same time. I use the grid for the infill pattern. And in the material section, these numbers are default for the PLA. In the speed section, everything is on the default setting. And this file doesn't need any support, so I deactivate it. And for the build plate adhesion, I use brim. And the line count is 5. The default value is 20 and it's going to turn around the file for 20 rounds and create a surface that keeps the print on the bit plate. It depends on the material that you are using and your printer bit plate. For me, 5 was good. And a slice. Preview. These blue lines here are the five lines of brim adhesion. Now we can check each layer from top to the bottom to see if there is any problem or not. Okay, this one is good and ready for print. We can save this uh, G code here for the print process. 
All right, this is the second component of the fuselage. And if we look at this from below, we see this red color that indicates where we need support. But during the design process, we had this in mind to prevent the need of using any unnecessary support and avoid it as much as we can. So here, I just need to rotate the model and from this direction, it is almost support free, except this uh, channel here and this pipe. So I activate the support. The structure type of the support is normal. I set the support placement on everywhere. And the overhang angle is 65. It's not the default value. I figured it out by experience that uh, lower angles do not need support and do not have any overhang problem. The pattern type is lines and the distance between the support lines and the actual component is 3 because I do not want to uh, have any support in these areas close to the shell because it's hard to remove them and it's uh, going to damage the component. And the Z distance is 0.1 millimeter that keeps the overhang issue away and it's easy to remove that support at the same time. And the same setting for the build plate adhesion. So let's slice the model. And checking the preview. As you see, it creates a little bit support for this area here. So this one is ready to print. Okay, here we have the first section of the right wing and I select this face for the first layer. And I bring it back to the center. As you see, we still have the two paths of the extruder for the shells, but in some areas of the internal structure, we have this yellow line that is another pass. It doesn't create any problem, it's good to have it. And we have this uh, support that goes through the structure. and supports the first line here of this channel. But I didn't uh, know that and I printed without support. It turned out good because uh, this dimension is very small and it doesn't have overhang issue. So we disable it again and slice it again. Okay, this one's good. The tail is made out of three different sections and they are solid bodies with no internal structure. Let me open this one because it's the most challenging between these three files. 
So, the only way to print this is to select this face for the first layer. And we have this little cylindrical shape here that is not touching the big plate. And resolution and print quality is important because it's the rotation axis of the contour surface. So let's save it as STL format. Yes. Okay, I select this face. And from the top view, I need to rotate the file to make it uh, aligned with one of the extruder movement axes. And as I said, this here, this area here, needs to be clean and more accurate so I changed the layer height to 0.2 and actually it needs to generate support slice and there we have it Okay, the rest of the files are just like these examples that we discussed here. We can print them all now, so let's print them. Now we have a reliable 3D printer and filmmaking equipment to have this time lapse thanks to Mr. Javad Mokhari, the CEO of Futech, who sponsored Dynamic Systems. They make various sorts of very high precision sensors in Southern California, like the Cryogen Donut Load Cell for Curiosity's Trail Arm, the Load Cell for the Robotic Prosthesis made by MIT's Media Lab, and many other projects. Check the description for more information. I'm EK and you watch Dynamic Systems. You can support me in covering more topics by subscribing to the channel or using the donation links in the description. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.